Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, cryptocurrency is all the rage right now in both headlines and investment portfolios. But how does a digital currency affect the environment? How big of an impact does it have? And what can be done to mitigate the impact? That and more on today's episode. I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic. Hello again and welcome to Rock Logic. I am your host Sean Kenny. And before we get started, I just want to add a simple disclaimer. I have never owned cryptocurrency of any kind. I'm not anti-crypto and I'm not saying I won't purchase it in the future. But the point of the video is to discuss cryptocurrency in general from an energy consumption standpoint. That being said, let me know in the comments below what you think I should do if I decide to start dabbling in crypto. Now, at this point, you may be wondering why the hell is a channel that mainly focuses on molten salt reactors talking about cryptocurrency? It's a fair question, seeing as I don't own any. And it's a simple answer. Crypto, being a digital currency, requires a lot of computing power to function, which in turn requires a lot of energy. If that energy comes from coal, it adds to pollution. If that energy were to come from a molten salt reactor, that energy produces no emissions. The reason cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin need so much computing power is because it's completely decentralized. There's no one central hub keeping track of things, but several smaller hubs that verify transactions as being legitimate. These verifications is what crypto mining is. In order to be as secure as possible, the way these blockchains are set up makes the calculations for each transaction complicated, which means each computer works more and thus more power is consumed. When the COVID shutdowns hit the economy hard, Government officials from both parties felt the pressure to provide some semblance of monetary support. In the United States, this came in the form of the CARES Act and various other forms of legislative initiatives that saw things like stimulus payments, loans for businesses to keep their employees tied to their employers, as well as unemployment bonuses to aid people who lost their jobs. Add this to the federal budget, the deficit, and the shortfalls caused by reduced economic activity, and the government wound up paying $6 trillion more than what they planned to spend. Traditionally, when a government spends more money than what it took in, you could borrow. However, everyone is feeling the pain brought on by COVID, so there is no one willing or able to buy additional U.S. Treasury bonds. The national debt is still high enough as it is, so that leaves one option. Print more money. However, printing more money, especially several trillion dollars worth, will eventually lead to rampant inflation. I won't go into too much detail about the negative ramifications of this, seeing as I feel like that's self-explanatory. The U.S. isn't alone in this. Several central banks across Europe and Asia are doing it too. 40% of the U.S. dollars in circulation today was printed in the last 12 months. We seem to be on the right side of it for now, but that isn't going to keep. This year, we passed a $1.9 trillion COVID relief package the $250 billion Innovation and Competition Act, and we're in talks of funding a multi-trillion dollar infrastructure spending bill. As government continues to abuse their currency in this way, the people begin to lose faith and credit in these traditional institutions. So oftentimes, they turn to crypto instead. This is frustrating to many governments because the blockchain technology makes it harder to control, monitor, and regulate. You can't bring the chairman of Bitcoin before a Senate committee and force him to stop because he doesn't exist. I mean this quite literally. Details are sketchy, but the most successful cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, was started by the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto. No one knows the real identity of the person or persons who started it, but we know what it led to. A secure digital currency that is now considered to be more valuable than gold. Its success has led to other notable currencies such as Litecoin, Ripple, Dogecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Stellar Lumen. Those are just to name a few. I could go on, but there are dozens and possibly hundreds of currencies floating around in cyberspace. There are hardly any regulations to enforce control, while I argue that's a good thing, there are no barriers to entry. So I honestly could start a cryptocurrency and call it rock coin and what? Oh, so I'm being told right now that apparently someone has already beat me to it. Oh, well. In all seriousness, the growth is quite astounding. When Bitcoin started, the valuation was less than three cents per coin. Today, it's hovering around 40,000 and some change. In March of 2014, the IRS declared that Bitcoin was to be treated as an asset like property for tax purposes. So cashing in coin for US dollars would make it subject to capital gains tax. 
This isn't just a couple of hackers in a garage anymore. Major financial institutions and even whole governments are taking crypto seriously to the point where some have even considered launching government-sponsored digital currencies. Microsoft, Overstock, Home Depot, all accept crypto, and you can even buy Dallas Maverick tickets and merch with Dogecoin. Many still debate the viability of it, but recent history dictates that they're here to stay, and for good reason. For the reasons stated previously, governments and central banks are terrible at maintaining the value of their currency. The U.S. dollar is still hanging in there, but that's only because it remains to be the global reserve currency. The moment that changes, we could run into some serious issues. Could digital currencies step up? Maybe. It still has a way to go. While Bitcoin and various alternatives have either surpassed or are reaching parity to global currencies around the world, they still have not reached global acceptance on a scale to replace them. That's not to say that they won't. As of February of this year, there are over 100 million crypto wallets in use with millions of active users per day. That's small by comparison to the global population as a whole, but still impressive. That number will continue to expand as the years go by, but something has got to be said about the consumption. According to the University of Cambridge Bitcoin Electricity Consumption Index, Bitcoin miners are expected to consume roughly 130 terawatt hours of energy, which is roughly 0.6% of global electricity consumption. That puts the Bitcoin economy on par with the carbon dioxide emissions of a small developing nation like Sri Lanka, which holds a population of over 21 million people, or Jordan, with a population of 10 million. This is the primary concern over widespread adoption. Sure, Bitcoin uses the most electricity by comparison to other competing coins, but the issue still stands. Cryptocurrency still uses a lot of juice. Many environmentally conscious individuals and organizations demonize its use. And while I can understand where they are coming from, my response is, okay, so what? Humanity has a long history of increasing its energy use as standard of living continues to increase. However, since the Industrial Revolution, we have become 200 times more efficient with our energy use. As technology improves, we continue to learn how to be better stewards for our environment. That being said, in the short term, there isn't really an immediate fix to the crypto issue, but the same can be said with other activities. Earlier this year, we did a whole episode about electric vehicles and how they will increase electricity demand over the next decade. The fact is, people will say these things are bad because we consume energy and there's a penalty associated with that, whether it's environmental issues or depleting supplies of finite resources. While I'll agree these are arguably valid concerns, I respond with this. What if there wasn't a penalty associated with energy consumption? What if the energy you consumed was dense enough to provide you with the things that you need while producing the least amount of waste and causing the least amount of impact to the environment you occupy? Well, let's be honest, we would be using more energy and as a society, we would be doing more things with that energy, things that most people couldn't even dream of, things that I hope to talk about more on this show. As the host of this channel, obviously I believe that nuclear power is the answer. I feel that as advanced nuclear energy becomes more prevalent in our society, the solutions to problems such as high energy consumption of cryptocurrencies will be resolved. To me, this seems trivial compared to what I feel molten salt reactors are capable of, but that's not to say I don't feel that the value of crypto won't continue to matter in the grand scheme of things. However, if the crypto market has told us anything, it's this. We shouldn't demonize certain practices or activities because of their energy use. Instead, we should discuss how to make those activities more environmentally benign by changing where our energy comes from. A miner in France contributes less CO2 than a miner in the United States because three quarters of his electricity comes from nuclear power. A miner in Vancouver will contribute less CO2 than one in Sydney because 90% of his electricity comes from hydropower. One day, I hope that most of us are operating on clean cleaner forms of energy to do these things. I'll be sharing my thoughts on the subject for years to come. Feel free to share your thoughts with me on the comments. Till then, I'm Sean Kenny, and this was Rock Logic.